I get excited to speak, but then I have no words because I feel like every time my brothers speak, I don't even, like, I have never met these men before. And I, I feel like I've known you since the day I was born. Yeah. Like this is, and, and the sad reality is we, and, and we are not discussing the beauties of our culture. We are not discussing the celebratory nature of the voices of African-American people. We are not ex discussing the, the beauty of dance as it, as it flows out of our culture. We are discussing pain. And, and I can finish your sentences. And we are from different parts of the country. I love y'all, I love the church, and I'm saying these things because I want the white church to be prophetic in this moment. But I'm also saying these things because I, I'm mad that I feel the pain of these men and that their descriptions, they, that, that my name could now be Arch Hooker. My name could be James Carter. My name could be David Ramon. My name could be John Lake. My name could be uh, Brother Gardner, was it? Sorry, who left earlier. That's, I'm, I'm mad that that's the case, but Prashant, thank, thank you for this, brother. For the past, was it seven, eight years now, we've been looking at like video footage of guys getting shot, getting killed. You know, I mean, innocent men, unarmed men. Sometimes run away. Oh my God, it's just like over and over again. And, and, and sometimes, you know, the guys are getting taps on the wrist, you know, as a rep mm -hmm. rep repercussion of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just as, as a black man driving down the street, I've been pulled over. It's just I'm almost conditioned to the the possibility of being pulled over. But then there's also the thought when I see this over and over again, and Lord forbid, I, I you, you can't help but to think, am, is it my is this my turn to become that martyr for the mm -hmm. cause? You know what I mean? You just see you see those lights flashing. And it's just, you're, all, you're automatically, as a black man, conditioned to, okay, let me sit, let me make sure I don't move too quickly. Uh, let me make sure my hands are, you know what I mean? But too many people live in the world as it ought to be, but they don't live in the real world that is. And if you don't live in the real world that is, you will never, ever grow into the world as it ought to be. So the, I'll hey. shut up on this, guys, but there's something about radical truth telling that I can't wait to talk about because that's one of the biggest things for me when I think of the next generation, even my own generation, that we have to be okay telling uncomfortable truths because there is no reconciliation where we're talking about healing, repairing, and transforming. None of that can happen if we're not telling the truth about the facts on the ground. We want to live in the world from an aspirational standpoint, which is a convenient way of saying we don't want to deal with what the world really is like because quite frankly, there are too many of us that actually benefit off the world staying the way that it is, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. When they pull you over, you have to know how to be careful on how to find out why they pulled you over. Mm -hmm. And this has, been, <laughs> this has been, like, and so when we, so here's the thing, when we watch someone get strangled on video or watch someone get shot and they're, and they're clearly unarmed, the reason why that is, mind-blowing us because we know how easily that could happen to us like they'd find the one black guy that was everything they were talking about and he would be the billboard for all black people and i was like you can't do that in the same way i wouldn't let you know my black people look at one white guy and say that's how they all are i was like we need to give each other's grace um love god and love your neighbor uh, really love your neighbor. Not try to make your neighbor into you, but love your neighbor yeah. as they are. Yeah. And so uh, I think this is a great opportunity for that uh, on so many levels uh, to really care for the neighbor. Is the purpose is if you see this and you're moved by it, but you're stopping there, you even acknowledge it. But if you stop there, you might as well never acknowledge it in the first place. We're needing change. We're needing action. This is not the liberal media trying to brainwash you. This is not the initiative of a political party trying to tell you you're wrong. This is no conspiracy. This is your own people who've never met each other, sharing from the depths of their heart and completing each other's sentences because their story is the same. 
if that doesn't reveal to you structural racism and injustices that need to be corrected now, I don't know what will. And that is the mandate of a new generation. Whatever happened in the past is different, but what will you do now? Mm-hmm. And that, that, that is the key thing, you know. There were good people doing good people doing slavery who did nothing about it. There were good people doing Jim Crow laws who did nothing about it. But now the question is, what will the good people today do about it? And don't try to wiggle your way out of an uncomfortable situation and hoping it will go away and hoping mm-hmm. that you'll find a way to look good in this because we, none of us look good. We're all sinners. But mm. to acknowledge it and say, Lord, how do I change this legacy and not be known for living through that and doing nothing and trying to find a cheap way to justify all this and move forward.